thin walled elements are basically the elements that are made of the sections that the thickness of the element is way smaller than the other dimensions, like the I shapes or T shapes. Previously, we have talked about the regular shapes like rectangles or circles, and we talked about how to determine shear stresses in those elements. For instance, in a rectangular shape, we have developed these two equations. Shear flow is VQ over I, or lowercase q, which represents shear flow, is shear force V multiplied by the first moment of area, Q, divided by uh, the moment of inertia, I. And shear stress is shear flow divided by thickness. Let's briefly review those concepts that we have talked about. So assume a rectangular section, a rectangular beam is subjected to two moments that are not the same on the sides. The moment on the right side is called MR, the moment on the left side is called ML, and these two moments are not equal to each other. These moments are producing bending stresses on the section, which would have zero value at the neutral axis, and it would have maximum values on the top and on the bottom. What we did was we cut part of the element. Part of the element is shown here by this red plane, so I'm gonna cut that horizontally and consider the top portion of the beam. These stresses that are acting on the right and on the left are not equal to each other because the bending moment is not the same. And that unbalanced stresses would produce unbalanced force that has to be developed on this red plane. This unbalanced force is called delta F, and if we consider that for the length of one unit, one meter, one millimeter, whatever the unit is, like delta X is equal to one, we call that shear flow. And this shear flow is the main thing that is producing shear stress on the beams. How do we determine shear stress? Shear stress is going to be shear flow divided by this area. Look at this beam from different angles because this is always confusing. That's why I wanted to draw that in three-dimensional way. If I look at this beam from side view, I would see this shape. So this is going to be stress distribution on this section. And as we can see, stresses are not the same on the right and on the left. And there should be a force that is developed on that plane that we call it shear flow. Okay, now let me get back to this equation. In order to determine shear flow, we need to determine Q. But what area do we consider for determining Q? Let me get back to this three-dimensional view again. We have two different areas that is sometimes confusing, and that's why I wanted to draw that in a three-dimensional way. That red area is the area where the shear flow is acting on, and I use that for determining shear stress. But in order to determine the first moment of area, or Q, I'm going to use the cross-section of the beam from the front view, which is shown here by green. So let me look into that. This is the front cross-section area of the beam. If you want to determine shear stress at point A, we are going to cut that in a horizontal direction and consider the area above that point and determine Q for that part. Okay? So I just wanted to show you a better picture of what are the areas that we are going to consider in a rectangular beam as a basic element. Now, I want to extend this concept into more complicated cases, which would be thin-walled elements. And again, look into different parts. So for thin-walled elements, I'm going to consider a T-shape. If I want to determine shear stress on the flange, by the way, flange is called the horizontal element of that T-shape, and web is the vertical part of that. If I want to determine shear stress in the flange, at the intersection of the flange and web, I'm going to cut that perpendicular to the direction of the flange, so I'm going to cut that in a vertical direction. And if we look at that from side view, again, we would see stresses developed on the side of that. So I want to look at this T-beam from side view. The bending stress is going to be similar to the previous case that we had. Now the centroid is going to be closer to the top portion of the beam. Okay, so these are stresses that are acting on that part. So there is a force that takes that to the right side. I'm going to call that F sub R, the force that takes it to the right side, and another force that takes it to the left, F sub L. 
the difference between these two would be that shear flow or balancing force. Okay, so in order to determine shear stress, that red area is going to be considered. In order to determine the first moment of area or Q, we need to look at that from front view again and see what area did we cut in order to separate that element. We are going to cut the element in the vertical direction and the area that we have considered for calculating Q is hatched by green here. So again, I just wanted to show you a three-dimensional way because in thin-walled elements, the same equation is used, VQ over I for shear flow and VQ over IT for determining shear stress. The tricky part is what area do we need to consider for calculating Q and what thickness should we consider for determining the shear stress. This is what we want to practice today. And in this problem, the moment of inertia is given to be 2.3 inch to the fourth. If it's not given, we can calculate that, but that would be just some additional steps. The distance of centroid from the top of section is also given as y bar equal to 0.657 inches. All right, I'm going to start with point B, which is a little bit easier. So similar to the discussion that we had so far, we need to cut that thin walled elements and make it free and see what area we have cut, also what thickness we cut and use them in shear stress equations. For determining Q, we know that Q is A multiplied by D. But look at this part carefully. What area should I consider for calculating Q? I'm going to cut point B, and I'm going to cut that horizontally in order to take that leg free. So this is the section that we have at this point. This is the area that we cut. All right. For determining the area, we know that the distance of centroid to the top of the section is Y bar. The height of section is B. So height of that part would be B minus Y bar, and the thickness of that part is given to be TF. So area would be B minus Y bar multiplied by TF. Okay, D is distance of centroid of that hatched shape to the centroid of the entire section. And because that is a rectangle, the distance of that centroid would be half of the height of that rectangle. So that would be B minus Y bar over two. Now I'm gonna plug that back into that Q equation. And for the numbers that I have, we get 0 0.55 inch cubed. Okay, any question for this part? Okay, the question is, why did I consider the distance D in a vertical direction? To answer this, we need to answer this question. What is the axis of interest for this problem? Remember in the bending problems, we use the right hand rule, right? For determining what is the axis of interest. For shear, it's even simpler than that. It is always perpendicular to the shear force. So shear force is in the vertical direction. The axis of interest is going to be Z in the horizontal direction, right? So knowing the axis of interest, the distance is the distance of that area to the axis Z. Now, after determining this, I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna ask you another question. What is the thickness that we need to consider for determining shear stress at that point? What area did we cut in order to determine Q? That hatch shape and the thickness of that part is TF. So T for shear stress is gonna be TF, which is 0.2 inch in my case. I'm gonna plug that into VQ over IT equation. V is seven kips, which is equal to 7,000 pounds. Q is 0 0.55 divided by I and thickness and that would give us 8350 PSI as shear stress at point B. All right, now let's talk about point A, which is a little bit more tricky. For point A, we use the same equation, VQ over IT. V and I are going to be the same, but Q and T are different. How can I cut this section at point A and make it free? Um, first of all, point A is in the web, and is in the horizontal element. So I can cut it in the vertical direction, right? And here we can take advantage of the symmetric section. This section is symmetric, so we know that stresses at point A is going to be the same as stress at the other side of the beam, which has the same distance of A to the right side. So I'm gonna cut that in a vertical direction at A 
and at the sister point, which has the same distance on the other side of the beam. And then that middle part is going to be free, and we can consider Q for this part. Um, area would be width of the section, which is H, minus 2A on the sides. And the thickness of that is going to be TW, so area is determined. In order to determine the D value, we need to see what is the distance of the centroid to the top of the section, which is given to be Y bar, and then subtract half of the thickness of the web out of that. So that would be Y bar minus TW over 2. Now I'm going to plug that over here. Area is H minus 2A multiplied by TW, and D is Y bar minus TW over 2. And we plug the numbers, and we get 0 0.532 inch cubed. Now the second part, what is the thickness that we need to consider for this case? Is it TW? It's 2 times TW because we cut it twice on the sides to make it free. So thickness is going to be 2 multiplied by TW, which is a quarter of an inch. So T is going to be half an inch. And then I'm going to plug that into that equation, knowing that V and I are going to be the same, and Q and T are different, and we get 3240 PSI. I just wanted to practice some problems in order to understand how to cut the section, how to calculate Q, and what is the thickness for the problem, which is all about uh, shear stress in thin-walled elements. Let me briefly review the steps that we need to take for determining the shear stress in thin-walled elements. So first of all, we know that shear stress is going to be VQ over IT. That's going to be the same for thin walled elements and for regular sections like a rectangle. And shear flow is shear stress multiplied by the thickness or VQ over I. We know that V is shear force, I is the moment of inertia, Q is the first moment of area, and T is the thickness. And V and I are going to be constant on a section. Q and T are depending on where is the point that you want to determine shear stress at that point. Q is always maximum at the centroid, but shear stress, not necessarily, because shear flow or lowercase q is always maximum, but if we divide that by the thickness, specifically in the cases where the thickness is variable, we may have maximum shear stress where the thickness is too small. So we need to look at the ratio between q and t, or shear flow divided by the thickness and determine where is the critical point for determining the maximum shear stress. The steps that we need to take for determining shear stress in thin walled elements would be first, we need to determine what is shear force or V, and we need to probably determine that from the shear and moment diagrams. Step number two, we need to determine the section properties, including the centroid or Y bar and the moment of inertia or I. And then, we need to determine Q and thickness, which is the tricky part. In order to do that, we need to cut the section always perpendicular to the thin walled elements at the point that we want to determine shear stress at that point, and then determine what is uh, area for that part and determine Q and then determine the thickness. And shear stress is determined from the same equation, VQ over IT. Now I want to look into some examples here. A T-shape is subjected to a shear force of 37.4 kN in a vertical direction. So there are how many points? Like 6, 7, 8 points here? I want you to determine shear stress at every single point in this beam. If I want to determine Q for point A, I would cut it in the vertical direction perpendicular to the flange. And what is the area we are cutting in this case? Zero. What would be shear stress? Zero. What about the sister point on the other side, F? That is zero. What about the bottom point, L? Now let's focus at point B. I'm going to cut that perpendicular to the element. And this is the area that we are going to cons consider for the calculation of Q. D is distance of centroid of that section to the centroid of the entire section. How would I determine that? The distance to the bottom part is given to be y bar. The distance to the top is h minus y bar. And then I need to subtract half of the thickness of the flange. 
Okay. Now listen to this part carefully and then you can get back to your discussion. What about point C? How would I determine Q for point C? How do we cut it? In a vertical direction and then this is the area that we are going to consider for the calculation of Q. Same is for point D. But now listen to this part. What about point G? What is the difference between point C and point G? For point C, we cut it vertically because that is perpendicular to the element. For point G, it is located on the web. I'm going to cut that horizontally. And what area do we consider for point G? The entire area of the flange. Or can I consider the area below that, like the entire area down here? Yes, either way is easier for you. You can do that. Which of these two points is going to have more shear stress? Is point G always having more shear stress than point C? That depends on the thickness. Shear flow at G is always more, but shear stress depends on the thickness. 